All right, everybody, here we go. These are the uh, futsal rules for professional leagues. Rule number one, the pitch. So in futsal, uh, I got to make sure that the playing surface is hard and a smooth surface. Uh, it's not going to be on grass. It's not going to be on turf. Usually, again, the, the size is going to depend, especially in youth uh, futsal leagues, you know, where uh, many leagues are playing in different courts, uh, different areas, wherever they can find some space. Uh, it's going to be between uh, 16 and 25 meters in width and uh, 38 to 42 meters in length. That's that's the professional sizes. And again, sizes will vary with youth leagues just for the fact that, again, you know, your, uh, youth leagues are normally trying to get into whatever gymnasium or, or wherever they can find some space. But this is a good indication of that can help you uh, figure out how big your, your pitch should be. Law number two, the futsal ball is going to be smaller, not necessarily heavier. I think that's a myth going on out there that um, people think the ball is heavier. It's not heavier. It does have a lower bounce than a normal soccer ball. I believe that's one of the reasons that people think it's it's, it's uh, heavier, but it's gonna have definitely a lower bounce. There's gonna be two different kinds of balls that you're gonna use. Uh, one is the junior ball, which is for U12 and under. And uh, that's about the size of a size three soccer ball. The senior size ball is for the kids that are U13 and up. And again, that's gonna be about the size of a size four soccer ball. Law three, the players. So you're gonna play five on five, four field players or four core players and one goalie. You have unlimited substitution. Substitutions are on the fly. There is a substitution box. Again, some of these uh, youth leagues will not have a substitution box, but you do wanna make sure that the players com are coming out completely before the next player stepping in. Otherwise, if there is a goal that is scored with let's say six players on the court uh, because the other player didn't come off, uh, even if he was on his way off, the referee will stop play and uh, deny the goal and they can restart the game once that player has uh, been substituted off. So for substitutions, they're on the fly, but make sure that your players are coming off the court before the other player steps in. So law four, players and their equipment. Uh, again, same as soccer, I mean, shin guards, obviously for playing on a flat uh, indoor surface, you're gonna want some flat uh, indoor shoes. Goalies obviously wear a different color. They're gonna, some of them are gonna wear gloves or knee pads. So it's just like outdoor, there's really not much of a change except for the shoes. For law five and six are about the referees. We're not gonna discuss that one. Obviously you'll have a referee at your league game. So law number seven, the duration of the match. Uh, for professional matches, there are two halves and 20 minutes each. However, the time is stopped when the ball is out of play. Again, this is for professional matches and timeouts are used in, in professional matches as well. For our youth league, especially in the KP Futsal League that we do, uh, we use a running clock. However, the halves are 23 minutes instead of 20. But again, with a running clock, coaches and teams do get a 30 second timeout per half. The majority of the coaches are not going to use it again because they're mostly there for development. The outcome of the game is not necessarily that big of a deal, but obviously during tournaments that might change. So it might be a little different for uh, tournaments. But uh, youth leagues are normally gonna have a running clock. Professionals will have 20 minute halves with timeouts. Law number eight, the start and restart of play. At the start of the game, the ball must move forward. And yes, you can score a goal from the kickoff. So make sure everyone understands that. The rest are just like normal soccer, um, depending on the uh, offense or the, the sanction or a drop ball, the referee's gonna tell you whether it's direct or indirect and where to restart. Moving on to law number nine, the ball in and out of play. Again, just like soccer, the ball is out of play when the ball is completely out. If it's still on the touchline, it's still in. So make sure that you understand that the ball has to be completely out. And same thing for a goal being scored, right? The ball has to clearly pass the line in order for the goal to count. If it hasn't completely crossed over, then it's not a goal. Moving on to number 11, offsides, pretty easy. There is no offsides in futsal, so you don't have to worry about that at all. Uh, again, we're going to skip uh, law number 10, determining the outcome of the match. I think we all understand the winner of the match is uh, at the end of the game. Whoever scores the most goals, if it's tied, then it's a tie game. Law 12, fouls and misconduct. Uh, there's no slide tackling. I think that's a big one that we, we normally have to discuss and go over. 
However, you can slide to the ball. If there is a ball and no one else is near you and you, for whatever reason, either slip or slide to the ball and kick it, that is completely legal. You can do that. However, you cannot do it in a dangerous manner. So if when you go and you slide and you kick that ball, but you also take out one of the, one of the players on the other team, then yes, you will be called for a foul. So make sure kids understand that. Also, after the sixth accumulated foul, when a direct free kick was awarded, a penalty kick is awarded on the second penalty spot. So during the game, let's pretend we're in the first half. For a handball, you get a dangerous play. Let's say you get five straight dangerous play fouls. Uh, the referee has been counting them. There's five. On the sixth foul where a direct free kick is awarded, then the other team is going to be awarded a penalty kick on the second penalty spot. That is 10 meters away from the goal, okay? So they do accumulate and then every foul after that, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the 10th foul uh, where a direct free kick would be awarded will be a penalty from the 10 meter spot. Right? They call it the second penalty spot. Red cards, yellow cards uh, are given out just like in soccer. Um, when a red card is given out, the, the team uh, will play down for two minutes or when the opponent scores a goal, whichever comes first. Law 13, free kicks, direct and indirect free kicks, just like in soccer, depending on the type of foul, right? Um, let's say, for example, that you get sanctioned for coming in before the substitution was completely off and, and you had six players on the court at once. That would be an indirect free kick. So again, it's going to depend on the foul. Obviously, there's a handball, it's a direct free kick or a dangerous play, depending on what it is. Players must back up five meters or about five yards uh, from the kick. So make sure that the players are getting uh, away from the ball. Two types of penalties in futsal, as I discussed earlier, you've got the six meter uh, penalty, which is uh, right on the, on the goal area. Anytime there's a foul inside the box, whatever it might be, the referee is going to call the penalty, but it will be from the six meters. The second penalty mark is 10 meters from the goal. And those again will be from the accumulated fouls. A team can decide. So the only difference on this one is if the foul happened in between the 10 meter mark and the six meter mark, the team that got fouled is, and that has accumulated the sixth foul can now decide, so the, the team that's going to take it can now decide if they want to take it at the 10 meter mark or wherever the foul happened, if it happened in between there. So moving on to uh, 15, the kick in, ball goes out of bounds on the touchline. Instead of throwing it back in like you would in soccer, we are going to kick it back in. You have four seconds to play the ball back into play. Ball must be on the line and the ball can be moving and it is an indirect kick. So you cannot score a goal directly from the kick in. So remember these four things. Four, you got four seconds to play the ball back in, once you have the ball in your hands and you're able and ready to kick it back in, the referee is going to give you four seconds to play it back. The ball must be on the line, can't be moving, and it's an indirect kick. Law 16, the goal clearance, ball goes out of bounds at the end line. The other team is awarded a goal throw or a goalie throw. The goalie must throw it back in with his hands. He can't drop kick it, he can't take off and dribble with it. He can't even go outside the, the his, his goal area. He has to throw it back in. Um, a player can, though, come into his goal uh, area and receive the ball in there. Uh, again, the goalie has four seconds and he can throw it anywhere on the court. Again, this is another thing that a lot of people get uh, confused about. They think that the goalie can't throw it over the half. Um, it's just going to depend on your league rules, uh, especially in, in youth leagues, but in professional leagues, the goalie can throw the ball wherever he wants. He cannot, however, score a goal from, from throwing the ball uh, into the goal. Law 17, just like in soccer, regular corner kick, just like you would anywhere else. All right, so let's talk about the most controversial rules in futsal, okay? Slide tackling, as we discussed earlier, the player can slide to the ball. He can slide anywhere on the court. However, he cannot slide tackle. So if a player has the ball and the defender comes in and try and slide tackles and takes the ball from him, takes out the player, that is going to be a foul. 
okay? So, uh, again, and obviously it's because, you know, you're playing on a hard surface and you want to maintain as much safety as you can. Some youth leagues will outlaw slide tackling just completely, uh, and that's okay too. It's just going to depend on what level of play your kids have in, in your league. KP Futsal, we do a allow sliding. However, uh, the referees and the kids know that there is no slide tackling, but you can slide to the ball. The four second rule, when the player is ready to play the ball back into play, or the goalie has the ball and they're ready to throw it back in, they get four seconds to play it back in. And this is when you are prepared. So. Once you have the ball in your hands, the player must put it down on the touchline or, and kick it back in. Four seconds, you'll see the referee put his hands up, you know, one, two, three, and the players have to be able to recognize that and play the ball back in. The other piece to the four second rule is that when the goalie receives the ball to his feet, he also only has four seconds to play the ball back. Let's talk about the one touch per possession for the keeper. When the keeper has the ball, let's say it goes out and it's a goalie throw, the goalie has four seconds to play it back in. He plays it back into one of his teammates. That goalie cannot touch the ball again because that was his one touch for that possession. He cannot touch the ball again until the ball goes out of bounds the ball is touched by the opponent, a goal is scored, or there's a foul, something has to happen where a new possession is going to start. That's when the goalie can touch the ball again. Now, while I'm saying that, understand that there is a rule, or not necessarily a rule, but something that, the, the, that most teams use called the flying keeper. The flying keeper allows a goalie to have unlimited touches and the way you do that is after the goalie has released the ball they can run all the way to the other side the other half the, the attacking half and they become just like a regular player they have unlimited touches there's no four second rule on them that they have to give the ball up but again they have to be on the other side uh, basically on the attacking half of the court once they come back to their half or the defending half, that flying keeper rule no longer exists. So they do not have unlimited touches. So understand that. That is the only time that the goalie has unlimited touches. They have to go on the attacking half and stay on that side. Okay? So one touch per possession, and their first touch is when they release that ball from the goal throw. That is their one touch. So anyway, so those are the three... The, the three rules that I thought I'd discuss um, with you because they, they are very controversial. Another one that I, I'm just thinking about right now I didn't put up here is the punting or the drop kicking by the goalie. There is no punting. Um, the goalie can drop kick the ball. Um, however, you have to understand that once you drop the ball, it is in play. So if you drop it to drop kick it, um, and a player comes in and kicks it in, that, that's that's considered a live ball. Uh, there, there will never be any punts. And just going back to the, the drop kick, the goalie can only do that when he makes a save. On a goal throw, the, go the goalie does have to throw it back in with his hands. And again, as discussed earlier, he cannot score a goal from there. And if you have any questions, obviously make sure that you um, put them down in the comments section. And uh, obviously we'll be happy to discuss any of them. But again, remember that you're dealing with professional rules and also with youth leagues. Uh, so there, there might be some changes in the youth leagues. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.